Dear students, in this last lecture for solid waste microbiology, we will be looking at what kind of microbial community we can find in a landfill or wherever we are disposing our solid waste and we will be looking at what are the factors that affect the microbial community structure and function in a landfill. Apart from that, we will at the end also talk about three uh, token research that have happened on the microbiological structure of landfill and how the research was conducted and what their results were. All right, let us get started. So, in the last lecture I talked about different kinds of landfill and these are the pictures from uh, Ghaziabad landfill, Ghaziabad landfill and all of them are Indian uh, landfills and the important things that I wanted you to note is that many of our landfills they resemble more like a dump yard. For example, this is more of a dump yard than a scientifically managed landfill. I also talked about the dangers of human beings and specifically children and at times adults being exposed to toxic stuff that we uh, toxic waste that we dump on our un poorly managed landfills. The another incident that I shared was a recent landslide, recent at the time of recording this lecture that happened in Ghaziabad where due to heavy rains, the waste from the top of the landfill slided down and it killed two people and it slid into a canal, nearby canal, for example, this is the dump yard and it slipped into the canal, so now the entire canal is um, dirty, it has toxins in it. All right. Then I told you about the composition of the leachate and the important thing that you need to note is that as time progresses, the chemistry of the landfill also progresses. Initially we have a different kind of reaction, this is aerobic, so the DO is the oxygen levels are substantial, oxygen is being consumed and then comes the uh, acidic phase where the pH drops rapidly and we have a uh, lot of different uh, acids. In the oxygen phase we have hydrolysis of our waste. Now the hydrolyzed sugars are acidified in the uh, second stage and in the third stage methanogenesis shifts uh, sets in and this is where the solids we start having solid loss and then we move to fourth phase. Uh, the fourth phase is where the solid lo loss is finally substantial and the methane to carbon ratio becomes nearly 1 ratio 1 and then as we progress methane might even be more than carbon dioxide. And over the end, finally, even if we infiltrate oxygen, we notice that our landfill has stabilized. And this happens, or we hope it happens, on, in geological time scale. Now, this is very important for you to note because, because you can see here that the microbial community, the function that microbial community in a landfill that it is doing depends on multiple factors. First, it depends on the age of the waste. Because as time progresses, the waste material that has been dumped into your landfill will move from aerobic to acidic and to methanogenic phases. The next thing it depends upon is composition of waste. Now obviously depending upon the composition of the waste, the progress with time from one phase to another would vary. And um, a recent report has noticed that in India, nearly 50 percent of our waste is biodegradable. So, at least we can expect that the uh, hydrolysis part, the acidification part, they will happen pretty quickly and will result in lot of loss in volume and production of leachate over time. The next thing it depends upon, because it depends upon age and usually the dumping happens uh, bottom top. So, we fill the bottom cells and then the top cells in our trenches. It also depends on depth. Also with depth the conditions change. We have noted in a uh, previous lecture that at 17.5 meter depth the temperatures and the conditions in the landfill were extreme halophilic and temperatures were very high. So basically depending on the time that has passed since the waste was dumped, what kind of waste it is and what its environmental conditions are now. Now, as waste gets old, certain daughter products of degradation will get accumulated, the salinity would change, the pH would change, pH initially drops here and then it normalizes back to 7 and at times maybe even more depending on the composition. Overall, what it brings us to is two factors. The two factors that it brings us back to here are first the foods 
the kind of food we are giving to microbes. Now, depending on the kind of food that is available for microbial community, a certain uh, populations or communities that are better suited at consuming that food and its daughter products will flourish while others will die out. So, the second this brings us to the second point which is succession of microbial communities. Here the microbial activity would be different and other kinds of microbes the ones that love high microbial activity would thrive. Over here protobacteria kind of microbes that do not like lot of microbial activity they will thrive because by now the food has been degraded to quite some extent and microbes belonging to many kinds of protobacteria would be happy. So, we notice that from time to time the microbial community undergoes succession. It is also quite possible that at the beginning of phase 1 and middle of phase 1 and the end of phase 1 the microbial community would look different because the chemical conditions of the landfill would be different. Which brings us to the third point the environmental conditions. Now, a question that this particular point brings up environmental conditions is that are we talking about local environmental conditions or does climate also play a role? Obviously, the climate too would play a role. So, that is now the fourth point. Now, this should highlight that even in cities that have similar climate, if the local environmental conditions are different and the kind of waste that is present is different, the age of the uh, micro age of the landfill is different the succession that microbial communities have undergone is different than the microbial communities found at any given depth at any given time in the landfill would be distinct. So, these are some of the factors that affect the microbial community structure. In the previous lecture, I also told, uh, told you about how uh, organic substances chiefly cellulose and hemicellulose they de and lignin they degrade and either result in carbon dioxide or methane. Now, the eventual fate is definitely methanogenesis because we are not aerating our landfills. So, remember first is hydrolysis where big polymeric substances like lignin, cellulose, hemicellulose they break down into similar simpler sugars such as cellulobios and then these are converted into uh, um, acids such as propionic acid, butyric acid, lactic acid which can undergo acetogenesis and they will all convert it to acetic acid or it will directly form acetic acid which will undergo methanogenesis. And then this is a brief review first is hydrolysis then there is fermentation where we get our acid. So, this is our acid pH drops down and then here is acetogenesis when all acid is converted into acetic acid and then there is methanogenesis where methane is formed alrighty. So, now let us look at our microbial community structure. Now, to review all that we have learned, we know that the age of the landfill may affect the microbial community structure. The second thing we know that affects the microbial community stru structure is the kind of waste. We can also call it the character uh, characteristics of the waste. And this among many other things will include definitely the C and H ratio and ratio of other nutrients micro and macronutrients. And again when we talk about C and H or carbon in, in, in itself we want to talk about easily biodegradable substances and recalcitrant substances. The other thing the third thing that it depends upon is the microbial community succession. We have talked about it briefly in uh, one of the previous lectures where I mentioned that we might start with five community members and without any abrupt change in the environment it is quite possible that some of these uh, populations might disappear over time with microbial succession. So, this succession factor is important next we know the environmental conditions are important. And this in here we are talking about the chemical conditions, we are talking about physical conditions 
and local environment. For example, it is quite possible that our landfill is right next to an agriculture field. Now, because it is an agriculture field, there is regular irrigation, perhaps not very low level of groundwater table and lot of NNP being used as NP and K being used as fertilizers. So, we will have a very different input of if any infiltration of uh, the local runoff into landfill and that will affect your environmental conditions. The next thing we talked about was the climate. Now, a question that this begs is if there are two landfills in two different cities which have similar climate, similar environmental conditions and similar kind of waste and similar age, will their microbial communities be exactly the same? Now, that is subject to research and we are going to talk about one of the research that will talk about it. Now, this is a um, summary of another uh, brief study which showed that uh, in municipal solid waste, most of the mi microbes were members of Clostridia, Fibrobacter, Proteobacter and then the methanogenesis uh, by carried out by Archaea were dominated by either Methanomicrobialis or Methanosarcinol. We have already talked about them earlier. Now, let us look at um, a study that has been recently presented and um, this study in, in uh, frontiers of microbiology and in this study what they did was they looked at landfills from different states of US. Now, it is notable that US is a vast country with diverse geography and, dis with, and each of them have distinct um, landscape and climate, local climate and thus the landfills have very different climatic conditions and also because the demography of USA is uh, very diverse, the in local environmental conditions are also very different for each of the landfills. Now, what they did was, now these are the uh, abbreviations of states. So, this is Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, California, Kentucky, Oregon and so on and so forth and these on y axis you have the microbial communities. So, the ones in dark red are archaea. So, you note Californian landfills had higher levels of archaea just like the ones in Virginia. Now, notably California and Virginia have very different climates. Virginia is typically con constitutes of low lying hills and valleys. California on the other hand is very diverse, includes deserts, includes mountains and includes very pleasant weather, so areas with very pleasant weather also. In fact, parts of California are coastal and thus they have very and coastal al along with having high mountains right away, right nearby. So, the uh, environmental conditions of California are very, very different within California. So, we are talking about interstate uh, climate and intrastate climate comparison. Notice, however, the, all the landfills in California had higher amount of archaea. Now, why would this be so? It is quite possible that the segregation policy of California is different from rest of the country and thus the quality of waste and the characteristics of the waste received in the landfills in California are different. Now, in the uh, red you have bacteria IDs and then we have candid uh, different unknown candidates chloribe, chlorophyxy, chlorofexy, firmicutes. So, these are firmicutes, the one in green. They are important because the first cellulose degraders which carry out hydrolysis or beta 1 for glucosidase bond um, were found to be members of firmicutes. And then we have other kinds of microbes and, and the blue ones are proteobacteria. So, this is your proteobacteria. Now, uh, um, no, okay. now, if we look at the proteobacteria and we divide them into different kinds of proteobacteria, the same thing here, we notice that uh, within this we have different levels, uh, different amount of different gamma, epsilon, delta, beta and alpha proteobacteria. So, there are two messages here. First, from one state to another the microbial community is different. Right. The second is that within a particular state, there is more similarity than there is between two different kinds of state. Now, these are the states that were sampled and this is the cluster analysis of landfill leachates. Now, this is landfill leachate, it is not the landfill sample, so they did not take out the waste and then do microbial community analysis of the waste. Instead, they collected the leachate. Now, remember an ideal landfill and which is true for most developed countries and economically well of countries and many developing countries as well, the landfills are very scientifically managed and as such they have a very nice land uh, leachate collection system which uh, drains down the leachate and then pumps it out and removes it. So, the leachate ha is the uh, collection of 
everything that could dissolve in the water produced by metabolism or received through rain and definitely involves a lot of recalcitrant organics and daughter products of degradation of the waste. So, th and the leachate it so happens also has a lot of microbes present in it and therefore, it makes sense to do cluster analyses of leachate. Now, obviously, the microbial community who made the leachate, some of their members would fall into the leachate and be collected in the leachate collection system. And that is how we assume that the leachate microbial community composition is representative of microbes present in the, um, in the landfill. So, look here, these are the states that were sampled and here we have Colorado, Oklahoma and Texas uh, grouping together. Now, Colorado is here, Oklahoma is here and Texas is here, they are neighbors. So, maybe and just maybe it makes sense that there is something very similar in these three that their leachate microbial community has clustered together. Now, let us take another example, here we have Kentucky, Oregon, um, Arizona, Arizona is here and um, these and AR is here. So, these states have clustered together as well. Now, let us locate them on the map, we have Arizona here, we, we have AR here, we have Oregon here and we have Kentucky here. Now, unlike this particular cluster, this cluster is geographically separated. In fact, none of the states that have cluster, whose leachate composition has clustered together are neighbors. So, Kentucky is here and Arizona is here and Oregon is here and Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma is not here, sorry. So, now notice that now this implies that geographical closeness is not necessarily the reason for microbial community similarity and thus the first hypothesis that maybe Texas, Oklahoma and Colorado have similar leachate microbial community composition because they are next to each other cannot be accepted. Now, similarly here we have Virginia, Wisconsin, Iowa, Oklahoma, another sample from Oklahoma and Florida and these states are also not geographically all clustered to each other. Okay, now let us move on. So, here in the key home, the key message is that microbial communities in leachate do not cluster based on geographical approximation. So, we can basically say that there are other factors that decide which kind of leachate will be similar to each other and which would not be. Now, another study that um, this another part of this study was looking at different kinds of conditions that affect the microbial community structure and their relevance to the microbial community structure. So, if it is not geographical uh, proximity as represented as seen here, then what is it? is it the region and then notice that yes it is region the p value is significant and the relation is nearly 35.7 percent which is higher than any other factors they noticed. So, perhaps two different landfills located in say in Delhi are likely to have similar microbial community composition. However, landfill in Chennai will probably have a very different microbial community composition than a landfill in Guwahati or in Kolkata. So, the region definitely contributes to up to 36 percent, 35.7 percent of similarity. Now, next thing is rainfall. Now, if a landfill receives a lot of rain compared to another landfill that will affect the microbial community there and we noticed yes, the value is significant and let me briefly explain to you what p value is. So, this p value tells you the probability that uh, that your um, whatever test you have done, whatever you comparison you are making is actually true, it is not a false positive or a false negative. Actually, this p value tells you about the probability that what you are noticing is a false positive. So, here the probability is very, very low, it is less than uh, 0.1 percent. So, this means it is probably correct that rain uh, climb region has up to 35.7 percent uh, the R square um, uh, contribution to um, the microbial community structure. Rainfall on the other hand had relatively lower. And if you go down, the other thing that is very important is age, which makes sense. If there are two old landfills, they probably are in uh, similar or close by phases and thus their microbial community structure would be similar. And then we had um, rainfall and the waste. How much waste is being put here? So, if more waste is being put here, there is more food, it is perhaps a large landfill and has um, a quite similar environmental conditions. 
Now leachate produced which will depend upon the rainfall, it will also depend upon the kind of waste also had some uh, definitely significant contribution to the kind of microbial community and then the waste dissolution time. Now this is very beautiful and I had not talked about this earlier so let me talk about this. Some waste that some waste like petroleum hydrocarbon for example are uh, not very not sol not very soluble in water and thus have higher dissolution time. So they will degrade slowly and the microbes that degrade them will evolve thrive slowly. Some other contaminants um, dissolve really well and fast like certain aromatic compounds and thus they will degrade fast and the microbes that eat them will show up earlier on the time scale and then disappear over time. So the dissolution time the again coming back to the characteristics of the waste affects um, significantly affects the composition of microbial community. Now the same study went ahead and looked at the microbial community in different parts of the uh, environment and built environment and noticed the similarities between microbes from different parts of the environment. So each dot here represents one sample and they are color coded so you can look at the color and then you know what kind of sample we are talking about. And what it is seeing is that look these are the samples from different landfill leachates and even though they are quite dissimilar from each other as we noticed here, here and here when compared to other environments they all cluster together. So now here we have soil sample, sediment sample. So the la landfill leachate uh, microbial community would definitely be distinct and separated on a typical PCA diagram. Now this is principal component ordination analysis. So th the more close uh, two samples are placed in this particular diagram, the more similar the microbial community structure is. So landfill leachate clustered together and sediments clustered together, the contaminated soil and water clustered together, wastewater treatment clustered together, canine uh, microbial community associated with canine and humans are mixed up with wastewater. So we know now what is going into our wastewater. So basically it is saying that human and canine microbiology is shared. and from what I understand this canine we are talking about are the pets that live with humans. So if you have a pet you are probably sharing a lot of your microbiome with your dog, with your cat, with your pet and your pet is sharing its microbiome with you. Okay, So there is some very nice microbial transfer happening. Now, now the human waste like urine and poop go into your wastewater treatment plant and thus they all cluster together. Here we have fresh water and salt water which be being the aquatic media they have some similarity some closeness and then this is bog and this is permafrost very different from everything else. Notice here that some contaminated sediments and sediments are sim more similar to fresh water and salt water microbial communities than they are to other sediments which makes sense if the sediment has aquatic system near it then it is quite possible that fresh water and salt water microbes some of them fall and are sampled when we are sampling the sediment right okay. So this is basically telling you that different environments will have distinct microbial communities and looking at the co microbial community structure we can actually get relationships between different environments. For example now we know that salt water and fresh water owing to their closeness with these particular samples we can know that these samples probably had two phase aqueous phase and solid phase. So the sediments were here, the water was here and certain microbes which thrive really well in fresh and salt water settled here or when they died they dropped the DNA here and then this was sampled as sediment. And also the human canine association and its contribution to wastewater treatment plant is clear by such an analysis. Now this kind of sequencing you can do by many different techniques and fourth generation, third generation sequencing techniques as mentioned in previous lectures will be very helpful for you to get this information. Okay, now let us look at another study. Now this is again a, the, uh, a recent study from 2011 and what they are looking at is okay we have a landfill now and it has a very complex microbiology, very rich microbial communities as is noticed here, very rich microbial communities. Now these are in solid phase or in case of leachate they are in liquid phase. Now some of it now we know Henry's law, right? So the concentration in the air is related to concentration in the liquid and in the solid. Thus some of it perhaps some of the microbes perhaps move on and they become part of the air. 
right? So what we can analyze this as is here I have my garbage dump or let's say in case of a well maintained landfill I have a well maintained landfill. Now it there are rich microbial degradations that are happening here. Some of the microbes will escape in the air and thus they will affect the air microbial community. We have known this that air also has substantial diversity in the kinds of microbes and thus the air microbiome will be affected here. Now this is very very important and very very relevant in countries like India where the due to lack of space or uh, the people live very close to landfill and interact with landfill di directly. So if you look at this particular slide you can see that the human beings are playing in uh, either playing in on the landfill or collecting waste from the landfill or, uh, or interacting very closely with the landfill and thus if there are airborne particles thus if there are airborne microbes that leave the landfill and come here it is quite possible that these humans if these microbes are pathogenic then the humans will fall sick. Thus it is very very important to understand the air, the microbial community in the air near and above landfills. And this is exactly what this study did. So the study is called impact of municipal landfill site on microbial contamination, microbiological contamination of air. So what they took their, this is their landfill site and they have the numbers from 1 to 9 are their sampling locations. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So they sample this area and um, they are trying to understand how the air in this area and they want to know what would be the uh, microbiological quality of the air. And what they noticed was that, that um, they, um, they have two, three different um, regions that, um, among these that they classified these nine sampling points into the new landfill area, the reclaimed landfill and the surrounding area. So they noticed that the new landfill um, area is now represented by dash so this is new landfill area this is reclaimed landfill and this is your surrounding they notice that mesophilic bacteria were most in the new landfill area followed by uh, reclaimed landfill and then surrounding staphylococci were present and remember staphylococcus aureus and other staphylococci are bad for health they are pathogenic and they were also significantly present and we noticed that in all of the cases the new landfill had more microbial community uh, members that were detected than reclaimed landfill followed by surrounding. So basically right above and in the landfill and if the landfill is young, so age and proximity with landfill, that is what will affect the microbial quality of the air. Now one thing to note here is the unit on y axis is CFU per meter cube. Now CFU is colony forming unit. So this has only captured microbes that are viable and culturable. So they might, there are lot of microbes that will not be viable and they would not have been captured by this. And also the microbes that are not culturable which we now know is the majority of microbes in the environment, then these figures might look very different. Now this is the uh, summary of the work that they have done. In new landfill area, they divided air pollution levels into three different groups, not polluted, moderately polluted and highly polluted. And this is what they observed, the percentage of mesophilic bacteria, hemolytic bacteria and actinomycetes. And so this is for bacteria and here they have for fungus. So not only bacteria but fungus and fungal spores were also present in the air. So the air around landfill, it's pretty clear, is not necessarily safe and a study like this needs to be carried on on a site to site basis. So it's a spe site specific study, case to case basis study to determine the safety of air for workers who work in the landfill and children and people who roam around the landfill. Now this is very important, we have not done such kind of work in India but it's very, very relevant here. Okay, so dear students, this is all for today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will look at microbes that affect our built environment and, um, and then we will proceed on to microbes that affect our public health. Thank you so much.